Mohammed, not about rates so much these minutes and a little bit more about the balance sheet and the takeaway I think for most people is how they make this as boring as they possibly can. Can you unwind four and a half trillion dollars to some extent and make it boring? Yes, you go very, very slowly. You make it a non-event and I, I think they'll end up doing that. I think the more interesting issue is, is not really what happened in the minutes. The more interesting issue is what has happened since the minutes. And whether it's, it's Governor Brainerd today or, or President Bullard um, later in Japan, is the Fed back to trying to make f markets feel comfortable again? Yeah. Were they shaken by last Wednesday's sell-off so much that we're now back to the old Fed? Or is the Fed going to try to lead markets? Well, let's, uh, get, let's get back to the regime change that you talked about at the start of the year, when many people thought the Fed would reconcile down to the market. You came out and you said, no, that's not going to happen. The Fed's going to lead the market this time. That was the first quarter. Right. Are they going to continue to do that? So I think they will, but the market clearly thinks they won't. And the market was reinforced in that feeling by James Bullard's speech last Friday. So it's going to be really interesting to see what other um, governors say, especially Governor Brainerd, because she's viewed as one of the most dovish yeah. on the FOMC. So I think her comments today are going to be really important. I remember several years ago you and I sat down in London before the first hike had come through and you said this is going to be the loosest tightening in history. It's been more than that. Yeah. It's been a dovish tightening cycle because financial conditions have eased. Have you been surprised by that? And what's the message that comes from the market when they hike interest rates, when they communicate and widen the balance sheet, but yields fall? Why? So I think I certainly and others have underestimated all the sources of liquidity into this market. It's not just central banks, but as the profit share of GDP has soared, companies have accumulated more and more money on their balance sheet, and a lot of that comes back into the marketplace. Then there's the inequality argument. As more and more of the income has gone to the rich, the rich's marginal propensity to consume is low, the marginal propensity to invest is high. So what I certainly underestimated is the extent to which liquidity would continuously be pumped into this market, yeah. which means that whatever the Fed does, the incoming liquidity is so large that financial contingents ends up by losing. Now, there's, there's a limit to that. And people should remember Minsky, that at some point, too much stability um, leads to instability. And I am a little bit, I must tell you, John, I'm a little bit worried about all these products that are coming out in the ETF space, mm. in high yield, in emerging, that overpromise liquidity for a normal cycle. We've seen that play before. It hasn't come out so well. 